give it a second of silence here. Hello and welcome to installment two of the Miskatonic AV Club. Joining again, I say again, this is all the same night, guys. This is the magic of editing. Uh, I'm Sean. Ian is still here again. Yep, I'm still here. Scott also again is here. Just barely holding on. <laughs> and we are going to continue our review of the core set with uh, arguably, and, and I say arguably very loosely because there's very few arguments to be made, uh, the best class <laughs> in the core set. <laughs> Who are the mystics? So let's talk about this lovely, lovely investigator we have who's just the, the goddess of this game. <laughs> she's pretty good Agnes Baker who is the waitress which is such an unassuming title uh, but she has the sorcerer trait she's got five massive willpower two intellect two fight three agility reaction after one or more horror is placed on Agnes Baker deal one damage to an enemy at your location once per phase phase is super important we'll get to that yeah. uh, elder sign effect you get plus one for each horror on Agnes, and she's got six health, eight sanity. Wonderful little sponge for her ability, and uh, I don't even need you guys to uh, to tell me her deck building restrictions since I know these by heart. <laughs> uh, you so have them she's... tattooed on your arm. <laughs> <laughs> she's got a uh, deck size of 30. She can take Mystic cards, level zero to five, Survivor cards, level zero to two, Neutral cards, zero to five. And uh, you include her heirloom of Hyperborea, Dark Memory, and a random basic weakness. Did either of you actually pull that out to check me? I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yep, you are correct. That sounds right. All right. Yeah. Uh, Ian, you want to you wanna tell us what her heirloom does? Sure. The heirloom of Hyperborea is a three cost asset. It's an artifact from another life, um, which is a kind of a cool subtitle. Uh, will combat and wild icons, item and relic trait, Agnes Baker deck only, of course. And the reaction is after you play a spell card, draw one card, and this takes up an accessory slot, which is actually kind of the important part. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. And Scott, round us out with the uh, the weakness. Sure thing. It's a two-cost event, Dark Memory. That's a weakness and a spell. Uh, place one Doom on the current agenda. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance and forced. If Dark Memory is in your hand at the end of the turn, reveal it and take two horror. That's so, uh, it's pretty brutal. On a scale of amazing to awesome, how great is Agnes? <laughs> Sean out of uh, all five investigators which one is your favorite and why is it Agnes <laughs> you're in for a long video folks I hope you brace yourselves <laughs> so I guess uh, talking slightly more seriously here the Mystic class is wonderfully fun it, it is mm -hmm. high risk high reward mm -hmm. uh, I always have loved cards in card games that take a negative and turn it into a positive it's a wonderful comeback and pace mechanic it's good when you're behind it's win more when you're ahead it's just always good so that being said taking horror as you're gonna do in this game like we've discussed uh, that ability to deal out damage without chucking cards for a fight test, without having to spend an action for a fight test, without having to engage an enemy to make said fight test. Mm -hmm. Just, she's she's a monster destroyer. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, like, for some reason, just the, the theme of her just really speaks to me, too. Because, like, she almost comes off to me like, um, like an X-Man. Because her, her whole story is that she, in a past life, in ages long forgotten she was a demon hunting sorceress and uh, whenever she gets apparently stressed out some of that uh, some of that dark memory starts to come back and she could blast an enemy in the face with her with her sorceress power so yeah i don't know i have only glowing things to say about agnes uh you would think that her her low intellect and her low fight would be liabilities and uh you know when you're if you're building with one core they sometimes can be, but uh, I think if you're building two core and up, she is just 
always solid. You have to get super bad luck to to have a bad Agnes draw. And, you know, honestly, I think that applies to any investigator. So I think people who want to uh, who want to point at her her low intellect and fight, which kind of, you know, if you want to argue they're the core skills of the game, um, they would be wrong. <laughs> yeah, you guys I, say uh, things and and say them carefully. She was my she was the first uh, investigator I took solo through the campaign. Um, and I absolutely had a blast. Her ability is just insanely good. Um, yeah, like it, she's super fun to play. Uh, and yeah, she has a low fight value, but the mystic cards make up for that. Like she has five willpower, and that willpower really does work. Yeah, I think the the yeah. the mystics, at least in this point. Uh, in the game, have a lot of the skill replacement abilities. There are some in the other mm -hmm. classes. Um, Rogue has a little bit. Uh, I think Seekers have one that, that can play in that area, but um, replacing your other stats with willpower and starting at a five, it it just opens up so much power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's definitely, you know, I could echo everything you guys said, have said so far. The the kind of ability to deal direct damage is super useful as far as saving actions, which I'll probably harp on in probably every set of player card reviews we ever do. But it definitely saves you actions, you know. Instead of spending an action to smack that stupid rat on the head, you can, you know, find another way to get horror on Agnes and kill it without taking action. All those kind of things add up over the course of the game. The other thing I'll say is that five willpower, aside from everything else, is just super useful in terms of dealing with treacheries, yes. which a lot of them test to will. And she just kind of like laughs at it, like, "Oh, that's cute," you know, yeah. <laughs> intellect three test. That's um, the thing is, like, even if you want to argue that she requires some setup before her other stats are on par, it's like fine. She can take, she can sit there and mill her time a little bit for for the encounter deck mm -hmm. because, you know, that that willpower will protect her from a lot. Mm hmm. Uh, I guess the only flaw that I would point out is, yeah, just... <laughs> I have to go there, so it's not... Careful, that's what Ian. I have killed um, for less. <laughs> and it's actually a flaw that is addressed rather quickly, but we can't go outside of the core right now, is the two <laughs> intellect. Now, we will see very quickly that there are core set cards that help you investigate, but there are some situations where maybe you don't have the right cards in hand, and you might struggle a little bit to deal with the higher shroud stuff. But it's mm -hmm. not it's not enough to like torpedo Agnes and make it so that she's unplayable or anything like that. Yeah. I think even in the core, if you pop a couple flashlights on her, she's got drawn to the flame, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And then she's also got mm -hmm. access to look what I found. And I think between those three cards, she's got enough clue acquisition to get you through most situations. If you're playing solo, I mean, there, there are, there are just not that many clues in most of the scenarios. So yeah, again, she has a lot. Of, go on. She has a lot of tools, and like I think we didn't talk about the class combination, but the fact that she has the survivor combination, kind of, yeah. you're touching on those cards, Sean, helps a lot with that. All it those sure survivor cards, it it kind of covers a lot of bases that might otherwise hurt her. Yeah, if she had been, yeah. you know, Mystic Seeker or Mystic Guardian, she'd be in a different place than than with Mystic mm -hmm. Survivor. Survivor has so much of the win by losing or do more with less kind of cards that uh, mm -hmm. it, it just plays into kind of what would be her weakness so well that I, I hesitate to even call it that. Yeah. And I think more than anything, she's just fun to play. Like some of the other investigators are <laughs> especially like Roland that we just talked about super straightforward, just like, Hey, I kill enemies. I find clues. Here's what I do. Whereas mm -hmm. Agnes has got all this fun, like, okay, so I've got this enemy with me who deals a horror when he attacks. He's got one health left. Okay, so I just move here, engage this other enemy. This <laughs> dude attacks me, deals a horror, and I've got forbidden knowledge over here so I can deal a, horror, a deal of damage to this enemy in the next phase. And just, like, all these fun interactions that actually make you think and make you actively play her, I think, more than any of the other investigators. Yeah, her skill ceiling is super high. Like, if you really get to know Agnes and the deck and the cards she can use. I think uh, playing multiple games with her, you can learn to take 
her and her abilities and her cards to like you know another level um she can be quite powerful and i find like she's also the one investigator that i find really i'm not a huge sucker for theme usually but i feel like i'm casting spells i feel <laughs> like i'm a sorceress you know like a sorcerer no whatever. you're a sorceress and, it's agnes yeah but she's a sorcerer well whatever. they just have to be anyways anyway yeah um yeah like she just i just i, just, I feel like i'm actually you know dabbling in the occult it, it's <laughs> super fun but and the skill as, ceiling being high, I just love. Yeah, totally agree. She makes you think, and <clears throat> when you do something right with her and you get through the other end, you're like, yeah, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> and I think one of the other things that distinguishes her from other investigators, like Gaff had pointed out earlier in the chat, uh, is that her weakness is one of the only ones that doesn't have a revelation effect. Uh -huh. So even though uh, you're incentivized to play it sooner rather than later, because even Agnes can only take so much horror, <laughs> there yeah. are moments where you may not want to it may actually be advantageous to keep this in your hand uh to wait for maybe the next turn when the agenda would advance anyway take the horror mm -hmm. deal some damage and and there there are just more interesting decisions to be made within agnes i think um skids would be a close second ian i'll, I'll give you that but uh, I think I think Agnes just really makes you think to play her properly, and that's I, I really really love that about Mystic cards in general, but Agnes specifically. Mm -hmm. Okay, gushing over, I'll get the tissues. Um, <laughs> Clean up. <laughs> so moving then to the Mystic assets. First, we have the Holy Rosary. So it is a two cost, level zero asset. It has one willpower pip item and charm traded the most important part of the card i feel is you get plus one willpower and it also has two sanity so now comparing this to something like the leather coat which at first seems like its counterpart right so you open the core box you're looking through the cards you see holy rosary and leather coat on opposite sides i super think they're not and the cost reflects that the sanity mm -hmm. is good on Holy Rosary because especially with Agnes, there are occasionally times where you take horror and you've either used the damage or the damage isn't uh, going to be advantageous in that moment and you can pour it off onto this and have more room to take more horror later. But I feel like pushing mm -hmm. Agnes from a 5 willpower to a 6 willpower, it really makes a difference in how often you actually have to bother to chuck any skill pips for tests. Most mm -hmm. of the time you don't and you're probably pretty safe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is super useful for that reason because six is kind of the magic number for about combat, sometimes even investigation. Like a lot of the stronger monsters, it feels like they top out around three or four combat. And, you know, when you're looking at the chaos bag, plus two is kind of what you need to pass a lot of tests, plus three to be really safe. So if you're getting up to six, um, that's going to allow you to be in a good spot to face a lot of enemies or, you know, using some of the cards we're going to look at in a second um, or pass all kinds of other tests. So it does take up the accessory slot, and I feel like Agnes is kind of bunched for accessory slots. Um, so that's why this is kind of, like, more important than her... Um, her own signature asset in a lot of ways, I feel like, at least for now. It's tough. It's tough that yeah. they, that both of them seem like they're so key to her strategy and they both take up the same spot. But I would agree with you with the card pool, at least in the core only. I don't think there are enough spells to make the heirloom just overall better than the rosary. So for the most part, whichever one I get first, I tend to play first. Um, well, sometimes. Sometimes I just chuck the heirloom for its, uh, its skill icons, but... Yeah, rosary, rosary is good. Yeah, I, I have the multi neck. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it's great. I think it's a two of. That's and I think I think it's going to remain a two of for pretty much every investigator that cares about willpower, every investigator mm -hmm. that can take it anyway. And I imagine, based on the mystic, uh, you know, characters and skills that we've seen so far, or sorry, assets, uh, that's going to be pretty much every mystic. Yeah, and I think I mean talking about the rosary versus, um, I think 
rosary is good just all the time whereas heirloom is good maybe more like flash in the pan kind of thing where you have a bunch of spells in your hand like you're going to put down a scrying and a shriveling and you have oh goodness like what else what's the word of protection right so you slap down the heirloom play all your stuff get some card draw and then you pull into a holy rosary and then you just replace it. yep and if you if you get late in the game you don't have a lot of spells heirloom is just a card to chuck to a skill test so all right yeah. well glowing reviews all around mm -hmm. so let's move on to one that uh again we're going to divide the community on uh ian do you want to read arcane <laughs> studies <laughs> sure. <Not really>. no. <laughs> <laughs> everyone start sipping on your hater hey now get ready um arcane studies is a two cost asset with one will and one intellect icon it's a talent uh, in this case, you're spending one resource to get plus one will or spending one resource to get plus one intellect for a, a particular skill test. Now, this has actually traditionally been a one-of in most of my Agnes builds. Did you guys find yourself including it in either Agnes or Daisy, who are the two cores who can take it? This This one is actually one that I can put one of in Agnes. I think... The skills it gives really help Agnes. I mean, either you need to nail that willpower test, um, or you don't have a way to investigate at that current time with all her tricks and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. It's probably the one talent I do use. And I find Agnes of the core investigators um, definitely skids is over and above her as far as swimming and resources, but as far as I never feel like she's poor. You know, we've got Forbidden Knowledge, and most of her cards, or a lot of her cards, are cheap because they have some other cost that's not resource built mm -hmm. into them. Um, she's maybe got a little bit more to play with as far as resources go for these cards, and I agree. And more, probably more for the the intellect icon more than anything else, because that can bail you out of a situation where you don't have one of your trick cards to to help you out with an, an investigate test. Mm-hmm. I'm still middling. And I think Agnes, <laughs> I think looking beyond Agnes, I like this one as well. Um, for Daisy in the course that she kind of needs help casting her mystic stuff and that get being able to pump her willpower helps. And also thinking about potentially future mystics, they might not all have the, the starting five that Agnes does. Mm -hmm. So this or could, this could mystics. boost that, that, that will for you. So, yeah, I, I think it's 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 something to look at definitely. Um, compared to some of the other talents, this is one that I that I like. All right, cool. fair enough. Um, so then, moving on to the arcane initiate scout. Yeah, she's a one cost asset. She's got a one willpower pip. Uh, she's an ally and a sorcerer, just like Agnes. Uh, <gasps> Forced, after Arcane Initiate enters play, place one Doom on it, uh, and then as a free triggered ability, uh, exhaust uh, Arcane Initiate, search the top three cards of your deck for a spell card and draw it, shuffle your deck. Uh, and she has one health, two sanity, and takes up an ally slot. So I know that this is kind of a serious type card. There's like a blood sacrifice going on. But for some reason, whenever I see this card, I can only ever see the emo girl in the corner just being like, ah, oh, my life is like this book. It's dark and old. <laughs> so I'm looking so at the fire bad. hazard of having a candle underneath the curtains. <laughs> really, There's so much lack of safety going on in this picture. Um, so the initiate. Okay, so you get she's caught she's cheap for what she does, right? And her the rest mm -hmm. of her cost is in that doom. Um, and then she can help you grab spells. So I feel like whenever you build a deck where spells are important, she goes in, right? Yeah, you know okay. the <laughs> it's yeah, funny okay. we talked about the treachery. Mm -hmm. Um because if you do this and the only spell you see is oh, the treachery. Oh, that's happened to every Agnes player ever, I'm sure. <laughs> it has happened to me. And it's, oh my goodness. Um, but overall, I think, fantastic. And the good thing about it, like, I mean, part of the cost is there's a doom in there. But she's so fragile that you can easily kill her off before 
maybe the doom matters. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Or player on a turn where you know Playing next turn the, for sure. The witching hour. Yeah, exactly. The witching hour. We should make that official. The witching hour is the turn right before the agenda advances, no matter what. Yeah, that's, that's, I like it. That seems fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, totally agree. So it, it takes the cost out of the cost if you if you manage mm-hmm. to do it. Now there are situations where you're you need a spell and you need it yesterday, um, and maybe this is a decent solution to slap this down if you're not you know have a plan to get rid of her before the uh, the agenda advances or you you know are in the witching hour. But I think for the most part mm-hmm. you can play around that doom and it ends up being a, a mostly non-issue. Yeah. That said, the, the, as much as I like this card, I normally only include one. I bounce between one or two. Okay. Ian, what say I, you? I, I say that I feel like I'm more scared of Doom than potentially you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> it, it scares me. Um, there's a lot of, particularly in the core set, there's a lot of, you know, at least two out of the three scenarios press you hard for Doom. So there's, you know, definitely the plan is to get her on the board and get her dead um, <laughs> when, when the time is right. Uh, but, you know, what they say about best laid plans, and sometimes that doesn't work. So I do think she's helpful to kind of, if you're just not seeing those spells that you really need, uh, she can help dig for those. But, I, you know, there's games where I've included her and just, you know, you draw those spells early on and you don't really need her, which is fine. You just ditch her for her icon or whatever. But, yeah, I, I guess I'm kind of in the middle on her. Um, I think maybe there's not a ton of choices when it comes to allies for Mystics right now. As that changes, uh, I might be more down on her. Well, it seems at least what we've seen so far in the core and what's been spoiled after is that almost all of those replacement effects that leveraged the the mystic's uh, aptitude for willpower, you know, in place of something else where maybe they're not as strong, they all tend to be spells. So being able to accelerate and find those quickly, um, I think can't be devalued. And... The mystics have a fair few ways. We've got forbidden knowledge, where you could put that uh, the horror that you take from that card on this to, as a way to accelerate her going away. It only takes one damage to get rid of her. I feel like it's not that hard to play around that doom, and the witching hour always comes anyway. <laughs> I, I like that witching hour part. That's great. <laughs> All right. So then, moving on from there. Uh, you guys may or may not have noticed that I strategically placed these, so I get to uh, I get to talk about this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got shriveling, uh, which is probably the worst Tinder date ever. It it seems like in the art. <laughs> so it's uh, three cost, level zero asset. Has a, a combat pip. It is a spell. It has four charges. An action. Spend one charge. Fight. This attack uses willpower instead of... I keep going back on fight and combat. What does the rulebook actually bloody say it is? Is I it believe fight? it's fight. Okay. This attack uses willpower instead of fight and deals plus one damage. If a skull, cultist, tablet, elder thing, or tentacle symbol is revealed during this attack, take one horror. Oh my god, guys, I'm so sad I have to take a horror. That's just that's two for something I don't want to do with Agnes. Um... <laughs> It's awesome. So as far as comparing it to like other weapons, the, the one thing that's kind of missing from this is that uh, it doesn't give you a plus anything to your skill. But it also kind of does, because we, we, I think we assume for most mystics that their willpower is probably going to be higher than their fight in, in most cases. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you end up taking that horror with Agnes, oh, boo-hoo, you do another damage. Yeah, no, the ability for Agnes to use this to do three damage, like... You, you almost want to see those, those other symbols most of the time. Yeah, and Sean, I was wrong. It's combat, not fight. Combat, Sorry. all right. Combat. It is combat. God damn it, Scott. Um, yeah, no, this, I mean, this is fantastic. It's, I mean, if we're going to use the 45 as the, the 45 automatic as that weapon, right... It has the same amount of ammo. Um, it gives plus one damage. It doesn't give you plus 
to the stat you're using. But like you said, <laughs> it, we're probably going to have a high willpower character. I mean, it technically uh, gives you plus three. It's just that, uh, you know, Agnes, Agnes <laughs> kind of, yeah. isn't that good at, at combat to begin with. Theoretically, <laughs> plus three. Yeah. Um, and it might do three damage with Agnes. And it costs three instead of four. So, and it's spell. Like, there's just so many awesome parts of this card. It doesn't take um, a hand slot. Sorry. It takes an arcane slot, which I did not mention. So you have two yeah, of those exactly. arcane so you can... slots, which, you know, generally I haven't had a whole lot of trouble, uh, trouble, you know, with with having too many for those. But I'm sure we'll get there at some point. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think arcane is, I mean, there's only two arcane, isn't there? Anyways. In it's the core, awesome. yeah. Yeah, in the core. Yeah, it's really good for, um, you know, it's one of those cards that if you're purple and you're a mystic and... You have a good willpower. You should probably be playing it. Um, the only bad part thing I have to say about this card is that I, if there's one thing I consistently forget, it's sometimes forgetting to put on that horror for the stupid mm-hmm. special symbol. I, I will admit to having well, forgot that. So that's before. my part. <laughs> but other than that, it's great. So your only knock against it is it's you my own to do bad things. memory. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> my own faulty memory. Fair. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, two of. Yep, two of. <laughs> Moving on then. Okay. Okay, guys. Here's here's where oh we're going to divide not only the community. We we're go. probably going to divide the <laughs> podcast right now. Uh, so we've got Scrying, who I believe falls to Ian. All righty. Scrying is a one-cost asset with an intellect icon, the spell trait. Uh, uses three charges. You exhaust scrying and spend one of those charges to look at the top three cards of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck, and you return them to the top of that deck in any order, and it uses up an arcane slot. Who's going to go first? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think <laughs> it's a shot. <laughs> Ian, you get first shot. Oh, you're going to throw me to the wolves. I <laughs> am. <laughs> Ready your keyboards, chat. Yeah. <laughs> All across the nation, the people are and world people are just pleased over their keyboards. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see if I can do this without completely straddling the line. Uh, I I like scrying. Oh, pick a side. <laughs> Fuck everyone else. <laughs> I, I definitely like the ability to. Okay, let me just throw it out there. I so far. When I first looked at it, I thought I would like it better solo than multiplayer. And in, in a lot of ways, now I'm finding the reverse is true. And solo, I find myself really pressed for actions. And sometimes it's hard to find the action to play this and use it. It's kind of that. That's basically what it comes down to is whether you're willing to spend those actions or not. Whereas in multiplayer, you know, that could be two player, possibly more than um, I find Someone myself else having be picking more up time. your slack, right? right Mm -hmm. so it's not you know i would not saying i would never play it in solo but that's kind of how it's shaking out for me so far Mm -hmm. scott Hmm. i feel like i'm actually almost the opposite of you ian um in solo for me with agnes uh it's a two of um just because i can totally control what's coming and when um it's it's synergizes so well with drawn to the flame i know when i can draw a top card and it doesn't matter to get two more clues and stuff um in two player i think i still probably run two when i'm entering three and four player it's just the the information to action ratio to me just drops like i'm thinking like in solo it's like okay i know my next three turns yeah right um Mm -hmm. and i can even mix them up and plan two or three turns in advance. Um, and I find that incredibly powerful. Three player, it is kind of cool to kind of set up who's going to get what, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I find solo or two player way better than three player. And solo, it's, it's a two of for me. Uh, so you guys are pretty much only talking about <laughs> scrying the encounter deck at this point. So let's continue along that line and then circle back about scrying players' decks. Um, waste, waste of time. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, my, my Lord of the Rings player in me places a lot of value in taking the hidden information out of the encounter deck. 
knowing what's coming and especially knowing it early when you can kind of structure your turn around knowing what's coming it's mm -hmm. really hard to put value on that and sometimes it's really valuable and sometimes it's like oh okay so we're gonna get two rats e glad i spent that action um <laughs> But the problem for me with this one is that there are certain scenarios where the actions can become so compressed that spending an action to play this and then spending an action to use it, it, it becomes so unattractive for me because, I don't know, maybe, it, maybe it's just because I tend to play more aggressively in, in, in this game and just kind of go for it. I'd almost rather just, screw it, let the encounter deck do what it's going to do to me. I'm going to go try to take out this cultist and it can take a swing. Um, so right. I tend in in Agnes for both solo and multiplayer, I tend to run one of. If I see it and the time is right, great. It does work. And and again, taking that that hidden information out of the encounter deck is great. Uh, but there are like if you run two of and you're under the gun with enemies with you and you already have one in your hand that you haven't been able to play because this doesn't actually do anything, and then you draw your second one, ugh. <laughs> just sad panda yeah. now that said that's that's kind of coming from the agnes angle uh which is the the name right. of my sophomore uh high school band um <laughs> now if, if we if we get more mystics that are maybe a little bit more on the stall and support side I can see this having more value where your your opportunity cost for using that action isn't I could have dealt three damage to this enemy instead or, mm -hmm. or something like that. If it's okay, well, you know, I'm here to support. I, I manipulate the encounter deck. Uh, but I, but I will say Scott, that I do agree with you. It is, it does have some great combos within the core. Love it with drawn to the flame. So you can set up a safe drawn to the flame and almost take the cost out of that card completely and cheese two clues off of like a six shroud location in scenario two. That feels mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm on the middle on this one. I think the f the the thing that kills it for me is the action it takes to use it. Yeah. But I think I yeah. potentially like I think I potentially like it better with other people than Agnes. I feel like Agnes kind of has enough bases has enough bases covered that I kind of feel okay just going in blind. Like whether there it is. Probably gonna handle. Uh, if it's someone like Daisy, especially Daisy Solo, then I definitely want this because yes, I need I need yeah. to figure out what the heck is coming. Potentially other investigators in the future that are maybe I feel like especially avoiding enemies. Maybe you have some like low willpower person in the future. You need to avoid treacheries. I don't know, but yeah, Agnes not so much, but potentially other investigators. I'd be interested. I think a key point on this card too is if you look at the art from the core set in the coffee cup or teacup, yes, you whatever do. it is. Fun little that's that's a <laughs> meta core set nod that yep. uh, that we were um, we we got to talk to Nate French and Matt Newman and they they pointed that out and somehow I don't think any of us had actually put two and two together on that one before, which is kind of embarrassing, yeah. but um, yeah. Okay, uh, send your hate mail care of mythospod <laughs> at gmail.com. Send Moving it to on. Tom. <laughs> send yeah, it, send no, it don't it send it to Tom. Oh, Nick, Nick. <laughs> yes, Nick there you go. It. Send it to Nick. He's a writer. <laughs> Use your words. Um, okay, so moving on to Forbidden Knowledge, who I believe uh, is Scott. Sure. Uh, so Forbidden Knowledge is a zero cost, level zero asset. It has one... Uh, knowledge pip. It's a talent and it uses four secrets. And if forbidden knowledge has no secrets, discard it. And as a free triggered thingy, um, exhaust forbidden knowledge and take one horror. Move one secret from forbidden knowledge to your resource pool as a resource. <clears throat> so, so this is like free damage, kind of. Kind of, like. No, this is damage it's, that you get paid for. This is this is like freelance. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I, sorry, I don't, I don't mean free. <laughs> I guess super controlled damage. It's kind of like the whole idea of uh, beat cop level two versus guard dog, right? This is, I want to do one damage. I'm going to do it now, mm -hmm. and 
you get a resource out of it. I, I like it. It's I, it's pretty yeah. good. And the the and it's point and click, right? So, so a lot of times with Agnes, before you get this down, you kind of have to do a little yeah. kajikery to figure out how you can get a horror on her. But as soon as this pops down, it's like, okay, um, now I can trigger this at any time I need to, during any phase I want to. If I've already, you know, popped a shriveling and gotten a horror from shriveling and done three damage there and used her ability for the phase, then you can pop this during the enemy phase and uh, take a horror that way, do another damage, and, and you get a resource for your trouble. I just... Uh, I don't think you ever not play this. I, I started actually pretty lukewarm on this card when I first started playing Agnes because I'm like, oh, I think she might have enough. No, it's never enough. There will always mm -hmm. be more da more enemies to kill. <laughs> they and never run out. And a, a resource for a free action and a horror who Agnes can take anyway. I mean, why not? That could be mm -hmm. your, your last horror that you put on your arcane initiate to make her go away before she trips the doom the doom trigger. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. There's a lot there that makes it easy to love it because it's zero cost, so you're not having to make up any ground. Um, it's not taking actions when you use it. The only the only thing it really asks of you is just that you're kind of spending the action to put it on the table, and, of course, they're including it in the deck and all that. But, yeah, for Agnes, I do two of. Um, mm hmm I guess the more interesting question is at investigators who are not Agnes, um, would you take it? Like, for example, with Daisy, I don't because she has a better resource engine, which we will get to in the secret cards. <laughs> yes. Um, I think I've gone one of for Daisy, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, potentially, you know. It, uh, the thing is it always has have value. It's just kind of a, a little resource engine there that's going to accelerate how fast you're getting resources, but Mileage may vary depending on investigator, I think. Yeah, I think so. You either have to be like Agnes, where you're getting an extra benefit out of it. You're getting that damage because you're taking the horror. Or you have to be able to manage the horror that you're taking through some other means. Um, mm -hmm. Which, you know, we're not we're not talking about post-core investigators at this point. But I've actually found this quite useful in a gym deck. Um, so if you can either manage the horror or get something extra out of it, this is a solid card. If you're just having this card for itself and this is all it's doing, maybe. If you've got a lot of sanity on your assets and it's worth it to to just have on-demand resources, sure. And uh, interestingly, uh, the LARP guy totally pointed this out, and I think uh, it has the trait talent, which is the same <laughs> as those talent cards that pump stuff. I <laughs> didn't realize it was a talent. Look so can we that. still call those pumping ones talents? or? Um... Um, I'm sure we'll come up with a snappier name at some point, yeah. <laughs> but they are, they are talents. So yeah, hmm. yeah. The mercenary. Talents. Anyways. Cause you gotta, yeah. yeah. Cause you gotta pay. You gotta pay. Him. All right. So cool. moving on from there, we've got our first level up card here. So it is a, a grotesque statue, which is a level four cost two asset with a wild skill pip as item and relic. Four charges, and if it has no charges, discard it. Reaction, when you would reveal a chaos token, spend a charge. Reveal two chaos tokens instead of one. Choose one of those tokens to resolve and ignore the other. I love this card. I uh, love it so much. I... Takes up a hand slot, but totally worth the hand slot. Oh, for <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, sorry. It takes up a hand slot. Thank you, Scott. Um... And they're not high in demand in, in Mystic at this point anyway, so just freaking go for mm -hmm. it. Uh, I like it's kind of like Wendy, except it's better. Yeah, but you have to pay for it. The ability itself is better. Let's say that. Um, yeah, but it it it's really great to mitigate your risk on those big tests where you you say you've got the Ghoul Priest down to three health and you've got a three attack coming for for whatever reason. And you just need to hit this test. Mm -hmm. Spend a charge. I mean, you're. I'm bad at stats, but your your chances are going to be way better. Yeah, you can, you can still get screwed, but uh, you're going to be in a much better place with this thing on the table. You're guaranteed not to auto fail. That's true. That that you is know, something like, that can be said. You might still fail with either or, but you're guaranteed not to draw the tentacle if that matters, because you can always <laughs> draw whatever else the other thing is. But. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Tom, that may have been a calculated risk. I was just trying to help the board. Um, so, uh, so is this is this a first purchase for you guys, or if you could afford it, assuming, <clears throat> or is this kind of a later purchase, or when when are you guys buying this for either Agnes or Daisy? I'm just kidding. Daisy can't take it. Don't blame me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you did the same thing to me at Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hey, buy this. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, my God. It was 2.30 in the morning, Scott. You have to forgive me that one. It was, and we were not sober. Um, yeah, there's that. Yeah, it's kind of a, a, a mid-range buy. I think, I mean, if you if you're playing Agnes and you're uh, getting lucky up to level two first. Sure. Um, but Grotesque Statue is, it's pretty strong. I really like it. It's re- really good. One of my favorite cards, period. Um, the four experiences a lot, so I do agree. I tend to buy other stuff earlier because I'm kind of trying to spread out the experience, get more bang for my buck. And then after that, I'll look to the Grotesque Statue. But especially, yeah, as you're kind of building up towards harder scenarios, it, it can make a huge difference for those, like, you know, there's usually a few crucial tests in a scenario and this is what you use the statue for to make sure you don't face plant straight into that auto fail or something else Mm -hmm. and it's so elemental like there is not going to be an investigator printed ever who doesn't care about succeeding skill tests so this is just one that's going to always be a good option i feel yeah yeah and the fact you don't have to exhaust it like there's four charges use it whenever you want like even better yeah, man. Yeah. If only if only there was an investigator that could combo this with uh, will to survive or will will to live. What's the what's, God? I can never remember the name of the one that lets you not reveal chaos tokens, right? Will to survive. I think it's will to survive. Yeah. You have a will to survive turn and then have a turn with the yeah. Never mind. No one can play that, so don't worry about it. Um. So then, moving on to a book of shadows, Ian. The Book of Shadows um, is a four-cost asset with a will and intellect icons, item and tome traits. It gives you one additional arcane slot. Uh, for an action, you can exhaust the Book of Shadows to add one charge to a spell asset you control. And it does take up a hand slot because it's a book. Well. <laughs> when upgrading, this is not my first upgrade. <laughs> You know, I, I know. It costs a lot, both in resources and in XP. And you already have to have a spell out for this to be worth anything. And that spell and has it... to be running out of charges. And you have to be in a position where you can afford to waste an action to give that spell an extra charge. This, I think, asks a lot of you for the spells we currently have. Maybe, maybe in the game's life down the road, there will be some bomb spell that only comes in. It's, it's like the shotgun of spells that comes yeah. in one or two charges and has a crazy effect. And then this might become worth it to, to recharge that one. But as it stands now, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever bought this card. No. This right now is like bike spokes material to me. It's... The the thing that kills it for me is that action. If it mm-hmm. was a free trigger, yeah. maybe I think about it. Even then, it'd be hard because, like in a lot of cases, I'm thinking about refilling shriveling, right? But I'd rather just play down another copy of shriveling for <laughs> for fewer resource and no XP, and just get all my charges up just like that for one action. So it's a hard sell. Yeah, maybe there's some scenario in the future where you have a bunch of spells going on. Maybe you need that additional arcane slot, but that action is always going to bother me, I think. Yeah, I think this one To is, add a single charge, just one charge. Yeah. It's balanced. It's balanced like two steps too far. Yeah. Uh, hard pass. <laughs> yeah. I want to like it because, you know. Recharging spells seems like a good idea, but it just it's just too it's too much. Yeah. Okay. So moving right. on to the events. And I believe uh this one goes to Scott. Sure. So zero cost, zero level event drawn to the floor has a willpower and a knowledge pip. Uh it's an insight. Uh draw the top card of the encounter deck 
then discover two clues at your location. This is a card I really like in Shriveling, or sorry, not Shriveling, Scrying, but also Shriveling maybe. Um, on those really high shroud locations, sometimes just really good. Just be like, well, I'm just going to take two clues and deal with whatever the encounter deck gives me. Or if you're sitting there with a full shriveling and a ward of protection yeah. in your hand, you're just like, bring it, encounter deck. Yeah. And see what you got. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> Come at me. <laughs> just make sure you don't play it last action. No. Yeah. <laughs> pro tip. <laughs> Generally not a good idea. Oh, yeah, and talking about Agnes in general, that's one of my biggest pro tips is don't draw a last action unless you really like horror. Um, <laughs> no, I have had one game. Okay, super aside from Drawn to the Flame, but I've had one game where I'm just like, oh god, I have no way to deal Agnes a horror. Maybe my top card is Dark Memory, and it was. End of story. Um, so Drawn to the <laughs> Flame, I love this card. It's, yeah, it's, two of it's like two free investigate tests where there's no risk to fail it. And the cost of that is seeing an encounter card. If it's an enemy, Agnes tends to be pretty well positioned in most cases to deal with those. If it's a treachery, Agnes tends to be in most situations uh, pretty well positioned to uh, to deal with those. So, yeah. And again, and I mean, just with scrying, those. yeah, and with scrying for sure. With scrying, with ward of protection. Um, yeah, I, I don't see why you don't run two of these unless unless maybe in the future we get some crazy high intellect uh, mystic who just straight up doesn't need it, but I suppose that would be Daisy, wouldn't it? Maybe in Daisy you don't run this. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could possibly be dependent on investigator. Some investigators might not be as well balanced and equipped to handle everything that encounter deck can throw at them. Um, or they have other ways to explore. But yeah, the, the, the thing is two, clo two clues at once is great and there are you know certain treacheries that make it hard or potentially impossible to investigate there and this, this gets around that this draws you uh, right through that locked door yeah yeah so that helps a lot um maybe there are scenarios where the encounter deck is really nasty that this isn't so great the thing is, if this was a Lord of the Rings card where the encounter deck is usually uniformly nasty, then I would probably give it a hard pass. Yeah. But but in Arkham, there are, you know, because a lot of them involve tests, so they might just completely whiff. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot more wiggle room for this card. So not for every investigator, but it definitely helps to make up for a lot for those investigators who can use it. And it has actually my favorite art in the game. I really like it. Yeah, it is pretty hard. Is she wearing mink? Or is that just really long hair? <laughs> That's a fur. It looks like a fur or something. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. So moving on through to blinding light. All right. We've got <laughs> blinding light. It's a two cost event, uh, willpower and agility pips. It's a spell. And it's an evade. This evasion attempt uses willpower instead of agility. If you succeed, deal one damage to the enemy just evaded. If a skull, cultist, tablet, elder sign, or elder thing, or tentacle symbol is revealed during this evasion attempt, lose one action this turn. Well, you can always do this last action. You can. Although then you've just evaded an enemy who's going to ready again during the enemy phase. So depending on what you're doing this for, that may or may not be a good idea. True, true. Um... Or, well, unless you're the first player to go and you have other sure. people at your location. And sure. Gonna... Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't mind it. Agnes, Agnes specifically doesn't really have too many issues with enemies, so I feel the need to evade not terribly common in occurrence. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could definitely see in, in future mystics who maybe aren't so well equipped to deal with monsters to chuck out that damage like Agnes does, then this would be much better. Yeah, it's not necessarily as strong as some of the other spells or options. Like, you know, a lot of times shriveling is going to be enough, but it's handy as kind of a, a tool in your arsenal when you do need to evade. 
maybe sometimes you don't want to drop the couple actions it's going to take to disintegrate an enemy. So <laughs> you just blind them and GTFO and forget about it. Um, <laughs> and I do, and I do like, like that it deals damage as yes. well as evading. So it's useful for sure. So essentially, what this does is you're paying two resources and a card to use your willpower and deal a damage instead at the risk of losing an action. God, I love mystics. That's so fun to say. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. This, this is 10. I tend to go one of for Agnes. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's there. Sometimes I just chuck it for a willpower pip and it's, it's fine. It's not blowing me away though. Unlike these ghouls. <laughs> Although I will say, if I can segue, the leveled up one mm. is yeah vastly better. Like you for two go XP. Ahead, go ahead and read okay. that then, Scott. Blinding light. Now it's a level two one cost event. Uh, same pips, willpower and agility uh, spell. Evade uses willpower instead of agility. If you succeed, now you deal two damage, um, and if you reveal a skull cultist tablet elder thing or tentacle um you lose an action and you take a horror oh i'm so sad for that which could then be a third damage <laughs> on this one cost spell are, are you guys like, not convinced that agnes is the best investigator yet uh if not i i don't know i don't know what to tell you yeah i find the the blinding light zero level one okay it's 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 fine okay Mm -hmm. um, but level two is vastly, vastly improved. I'm surprised that it's only two XP to upgrade to it. Agree. I, I really like the level two one. The, I mean, mm. a one cost event that uses willpower to do two damage by itself. That's fine. And then you also evade it. And then if you're playing Agnes, you also stand a chance of doing another damage. So, yeah, I mean, you could lose an action, but if there you do happen to lose things. an action, you you still get that extra damage with the horror, right? It's mm -hmm. yeah. The you know the other useful thing about it is it's you know it's a way to ping for damage that's gonna that's gonna test against the enemy's agility instead of combat. So True. some some enemies are very beefy, but they're slow, and so it it may just be a way to to chuck two damage on it with this upgraded version. Uh, because it has like two agility instead of four combat or something, and it's just the easier test. I've and definitely then as used a, as it for an that incidental purpose. Incidental benefit, then you also exhaust it. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So if you're running both shriveling and blinding light, you've got kind of a way to deal with most enemies, really. If I not all of them. like it. <laughs> I like it. Uh, Ian, do you want to read uh, test of protection? <laughs> <laughs> the word of will is <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the one cost event with a wild icon the spell in spirit trait um, so don't miss that spell trait if you're using your heirloom mm -hmm. fast play when you draw a non-weakness treachery card you cancel that card's revelation effect then you take one horror two of end of story <laughs> yeah pretty much so it's a balanced test of will? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, for those who, who maybe didn't play Lord of the Rings, the Lord of the Rings in the core set had a card like this, except it canceled any revelation effect revealed from the encounter deck and didn't have any horror or damage or anything like that. It just... Hey, no downside. Cancel? No downside at all. So yeah. even with the balance that gives it a couple restrictions and, and or a restriction and a downside, this is still so playable. I think in any investigator that can take this, it's pretty much a two of. I would agree. I, yeah. I it's Agreed. that powerful of an effect. Treachery is bad are things are brutal. Too. Yeah, and you want to stop that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know what else there is to say about that. <laughs> is there more to say? <laughs> no, no, it's run really two. Good. It's really good. Play it, and also don't if you forget... can have level zero. <laughs> Don't forget that you draw a card if you've got the heirloom out, and uh, the initiate can grab this for you because it is a spell. Yeah. Um, I know we're talking about Corset, but the Dunwich Investigators, everyone's talking about, oh, take for your five cards. And 
to me it's like ward of protection times two and then three other cards yeah i mean it's it's decent splash if you can take it out of class i mean why not yeah. most of the time or a lot of the time that test that the treachery is going to make you make could deal you three or four horror anyway so <laughs> why not just cancel it and take one yeah Okay, um, so then moving on to uh, a level one spell. Uh, so we've got Mind Wipe, costs one as well. We've got Willpower and Combat, pips. Fast, play after a phase begins. Choose a non-elite enemy at your location. Treat the chosen enemy's printed text box as if it were blank, except for traits, until the end of the phase. Um... So this stops retaliate. This mm -hmm. stops hunter. Yes. Mm -hmm. This stops uh, bad effects that happen when this engages you or when it attacks you potentially. Um, it also stops victory points ooh, and enemies does. entering the victory display. It super does. Don't would, don't it'd be bad. <laughs> Don't hit a victory point enemy with this when you're about to kill it. That's a super sad story. Um, though I feel like that's probably an oversight, except for traits and victory <laughs> points. Um, yeah, I find myself not really taking this that often. There are there are certainly corner cases that could be made where this is amazing, but I feel like kind of on the general usability scale, this one's pretty pretty low. In most cases, I'd rather have something else. Is that is that your guys' experience? Dare I say that this is the dynamite of the Mystic class? Oh, you just did. It's... You better back it up now, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that the, I think that for it to be... Well, I mean, this one takes XP, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but dynamite and mind wipe seem like they have such niche corner cases, and they'd be amazing when it works, mm. but when I'm face checking a scenario, I'm not going to put this in my deck because who knows, maybe the enemies aren't the problem. Or the only one that it would be worth it to play this on is the elite enemy in the deck. And, oh, whoops, can't, can't really do that. The other thing that I think really limits this beyond being just kind of generally playable, like I mean, it's playable, but just like calling it playable uh, is that it has to be at your location. So the enemy is kind of already upon you. Mm -hmm. If you could stop an enemy from hunting at the next location over, that's good. Yes. I mean, that's that's like saving yeah. you an evade test, basically. Something like that. Uh, so I don't know. God, Ian, what, what have you had with this one? What's your experience, man? <laughs> Whereas Dynamite is awesome and leads to interesting stories, Mind Wipe is mostly just like sits in people's boxes and as I get played from <laughs> at least hearing people talk and that's been my own experience. Um, it's like one of those cards where I'm glad it exists yes. because I would put money that there will be situations in the future, future campaigns for the life of the game where you know there's some enemy with a horrible effect and you're glad this exists. But for now, for the core set campaign, not very useful. So it's like, you know, I don't know, it's like an IOU. At some point it'll it'll come in, but for now, not so much. Agree. Yep. Keep an eye on it though. There might be there might be some problem enemy or group of enemies that do something terrible. And maybe that that encounter set persists throughout the campaign where this might actually become worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely like ultimate toolbox kind of sideboard card that think about it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, then finishing out the set, uh, Ian, you want to run us through Fearless? Fearless is a skill. It has one will icon, the innate trait, and if this skill test is successful, you heal one horror. This was a card that I was initially um, not so hot on, and then oh, I God, turned too. around on it. Me too. Yeah. Okay. Once I saw how much damage Agnes, I mean, how much horror <laughs> Agnes could pile up in a, in a game, I'm like, yeah, this isn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, it, it helps those crucial ones you got to get through on willpower. You're fighting a pretty high attack enemy, and you want to run your shriveling. It's one more pip, and then you get the horror back. Like, it, it's, I think it's great. 
it's good yeah. and and i play a lot of two-handed where i i take two investigators and play solo as if i were two players and uh, i think out of the core one of those one of the most powerful combinations is agnes and roland and mm. yeah, as we've discussed in the prior video roland one of his achilles his achilles heel is his low sanity threshold so if roland's hurting you can chuck this at a test for him and help him out too so um yeah I, I'm right there with you, and I was very initially, or sorry, I was initially very lukewarm on this card. It was a one of. I'm like, all right, we'll see if it does anything. And then I had a couple games where it did something. I'm like, all right, we'll check more in, and then I continued to do things. So yeah, very positive on this card now. It's a two of an Agnes. Yeah, totally. And like you said, John, the ability to help him, fantastic. And that art, is that? Oh. That is pretty awesome art. It makes me uneasy. I mean, the eyes kind of <laughs> look like rocks, but that almost makes it creepier. Yeah. That person is definitely fearless. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I think that wraps it up for this, the, the best class in Arkham Horror, the card game, the Mystics. <coughs> if uh, you haven't played with them yet, I'd highly recommend it. They're super. Agnes is super fun. Uh, everything that we've seen spoiled for Mystics coming out uh, just seems to continue the awesomeness, especially a certain little card that I like to call Delve Too Deep, uh, with which I plan to make my cohorts produce much stomach acid. Um, so yeah, guys, anything to say about uh, Agnes or the Mystics uh, before we close this up? They're super fun. Yeah, can't <laughs> argue with that. <laughs> So All definitely, right. if you're the type of player who likes shenanigans and kind of coming up with crazy ways to get yourself out of a situation, or you like playing with fire, Mystic is definitely a good choice. There it is. There it mm -hmm. is. If you're a pyromaniac in real life, chances <laughs> are you will enjoy playing Mystics. Um, and also, if you're the guy at the table who just likes, your, uh, likes to make your teammates go, go what are you doing? Why? Ah. Play Mystics. They, they will do lots of that. So, as mentioned on the prior videos, do check us out at uh, WordPress.com, mythosbusters.wordpress.com, uh, where we do a podcast. Uh, we've got Facebook, so follow us there. We are on Twitter at Mythosbusters. And we have a Discord that I would invite you to come join. That is discord.me slash Mythosbusters. Lots of fun discussion in there. And uh, we also record our podcast live, so you can come in and uh, throw in comments, much like Twitch here, but for the audio portion. Um, and you know what, guys? I think that's going to wrap it up for this, the second and probably, depressingly enough, best episode of the Miskatonic <laughs> AV Club. So we will see you next time. No, at some point, I really expect you guys.